Hello, and welcome to Catholicism in the Car. My name is Parker Zerbaum. Recently, I heard Bishop Robert Barron and some other, uh, I've heard some other Thomas as well, talk about how the concept of univocity, as expressed by Blessed Don, John Don Scotus, leads to the nominalism of William of Ockham and also later thinkers such as uh, uh, Jan Hus, uh, Luther, Calvin, Zwingli, many of the early Reformation thinkers. Um, the accusation is that the concept of univocity brings forth premise of nominalism. Now, I think this fundamentally understand, uh, misunderstands what Blessed John Duns Curtis was trying to say. In his development of the concept of univocity, as opposed to equivocity, as proposed by uh, Thomas Aquinas, uh, a number of the Church Fathers, and uh, particularly rooted in Aristotle, I guess first it would be good to go over what the difference between these two terms are. Equivocity is saying uh, that the natures of God and man are equivocal. They're, they're equivalent. Uh, they are similar, but not exact. Whereas the concept of univocity suggests that uh, the concept of being between God and man are the same. Now, this does not mean that the being between God and man are the same. This, John Duns Curtis does not say that uh, God and man are, God, the being of God and man are univocal. He says that the concept of being between God and man are univocal. So where does this become a problem? Uh, that springs into nominalism, as is accused by certain Thomists. Well, if you think about it, if the relationship between God and man is equivocal or uh, just similar but not exact, then the natures of God and man are also similar but not exact. Um, and, you know, that is quite clearly true, that the natures of God and man are, are only similar. Uh, man does not have a divine nature, um, and, and the Trinity, in its essence, does not have a human nature. Now, when you get into the incarnation of Jesus Christ and all of that, that's a slightly different topic, but is related. Um, now, this is also related to us, John Duns Curtis's view of the primacy of Christ. The primacy of Christ um, is an idea put forth by him and also also some others like uh, Maximus the Confessor uh, that articulates um, that, that God would have become man whether man had sinned or not. So, as, as described by many later Franciscan authors, uh, the story kind of goes like this. God created the angels, and they were given a test. And the test was the vision of that was in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, the very beginning of chapter 12. And that is, a woman in the sky, clothed with the sun, stars at her feet, holding, uh, sorry, and bearing a child. And the Franciscan thesis is that uh, this 
part of the book of Revelation is actually the vision that was given to the angels and was the uh, determining factor of whether the angels were going to align themselves with God or not. Now what God was saying through this image of the woman bearing forth the child was also that God himself would become that child. Now Satan, who Lucifer was the, the greatest of all the angels that God had created, said, No, Lord, I will not accept this. He said, um, He said, We cannot accept that, that God will become part of a hybrid creature, a creature with a body and a creature with a soul. God needs to stay pure and unadulterated. He, he cannot take upon himself a body. And because of this, him and many of the other angels left the presence of God. And for them, being pure intellects, they can't change their minds. How this relates is that since God always planned to become a man, since it was the Father's determination that the Son would always take upon himself a human nature, it is therefore, in a sense, poetic that the nature, the natures between God and man, would be one in a certain sense. In Jesus Christ, there is a, a university of the concept of being. Uh, in Jesus Christ, there is a similarity. Um, there that is more than just equivocal. Uh, it is that Jesus has a physical and a spiritual nature. He is not just spiritual. So is man. Man has a physical and a spiritual nature, and they are one. We are enfleshed souls. God, uh, Jesus, is enfleshed God. So yes, in a certain sense, it is still equivocal, but in a different case than that described by Thomas Aquinas, there is a, a, a poetical um, aspect to God that he took upon himself human nature, and and he did, and that he didn't do so just by compulsion because of man's sin but by uh, utter free choice from the beginning. And so therefore, in God's design, he himself was to take upon those two natures from all of eternity. And thus, in that sense, the university of the concept of being he is a Catholic one and does not lead to nominalism. Now, where, where it is accused that it leads to nominalism is that uh, it, it makes man's primary nature his spiritual. Because if you, if you come to this with the premise, as Equivocity does, that God is spiritual, God is of a spiritual nature, and man is of a... Uh, uh, a physical and spiritual nature, then there's, there's no way that they can be reconciled. And so that leads to the position of nominalism, in a certain sense, where man has a purely spiritual nature uh, in order to be univocal with the Godhead in his being. Um, 
And that is a problem. That is a problem. Because then that leads to... If, if man and God have only a spiritual nature and the body is just something that um, man takes upon himself and, and or God gives man as a burden, you could say, or just as a temporary thing, then that blending of spiritual and physical no longer exists. And so in uh, nominalism, the only concepts that exist are those that can uh, be physically known in a very real sense. Um, except for God, of course, and the angels. I mean, there's there are nominalists who are religious, who like many many Protestant nominalists who would still agree that you know there is a spiritual nature in God and the angels, but that there is no such thing as treeness or uh, rockness or Thing, things do not have natures. Things do not have natures in a nominalistic view. And so they're, they're only unified in the fact that they exist. There is no indistinct nature there. Hope that helps.